now that you guys know who I am, let us talk about potatoes. Suppose there is a friend of ours, he goes to the market to purchase potatoes. He discovers that the potatoes are available for a very cheap price. So, he decides to buy a lot of it. As Indians, that's what we do. If there's something available for cheap, we buy lots of it. So, he buys a hundred kilograms of potatoes. Now, this guy gets himself a truck to load all these potatoes and returns home. After returning home, he realizes that the potatoes are 99% water by weight. This means that the potato solids are just 1% of what he has. Now, that's what happens when you try and buy something for cheap. So, he realizes that, realizes that there is a need for these potatoes to dehydrate. So, he sets them to evaporate under the sun. After a while, he checks in and he discovers that the potatoes are now 98% water by weight. A reduction in the water content. Now, the question is, if the 99% water by weight potatoes weigh 100 kilograms, how much would the 98% potatoes weigh? How many of you think that the weight of the potatoes would be from 97 to 100 kilograms? You may raise your hands. Okay. How many of you think that the weight of the potatoes would range from 90 to 97? You may raise your hands. Okay. A lot here. And how many of you think that the weight of potatoes wouldn't change? It would say 100 kilograms itself. Raise your hands. Okay, a few hands here as well. Now, I'd like to tell that all of you guys who have raised your hands are unfortunately incorrect. The actual weight of potatoes turns out to be 50 kilograms. Yes, you heard it right, 50 kilograms. This in mathematics is widely known as the potato paradox. Now, let's figure out the math behind what might have happened. Okay. Now, we know that the potatoes early were 99% water by weight, which means that the ratio of water content to potato solid content was 99 is to 1. Now, for 100 kilograms of potatoes, we know that it has to be 1 kilogram. The weight of the potato substance has to be 1 kilogram because it is a 100 kilogram set of potatoes. Now, after evaporation, we have a 98% water by weight potatoes. That means the ratio is 98 is to 2, which can be reduced to 49 is to 1. Now, as there is a one, as there are one kilogram of potato solid available, the water content has to be 49 kilograms. This leads us to the answer 50 kilograms. Yes, most mathematics is this. It's all about unraveling such an amazing phenomenon and figuring out a beautiful explanation to support it. If there is one message that I want to convey through this talk, it is this. I don't expect everyone to be math experts. I don't even expect everyone to be successfully uh, able to solve this potato paradox. All I want is that people be acquainted with basic mathematics and they be swept over by the beauty, by the wave of mathematical beauty. Let me share a personal anecdote. This is me when I was four. Now, I was reading a book titled Graph Theory. I did not know what graphs were, what theory was. I didn't know anything. I was just flipping through the random pages of the book. I used to open a page of the book. If there happened to be a graph on any of the page, I used to be happy. If somehow there wasn't a graph on the page, I used to become sad. My, my father observed this and he helped me calculate the exact chance or probability of me being happy by knowing the total number of graphs in the book and the total number of pages in the book. My main point with all this is that our interest and inclination towards mathematics develops at an early age from what we learn at our homes by our parents. We can almost be sure that our education system is never going to budge. With the stake of the education of all the lot of students, it is really difficult, it is really challenging to find a system that is applicable to each and everyone justifiably. But parents are free of this limitation. With only one, two or three children to focus upon, they can develop personalized methods of teaching. But in an age where parents hardly find time to supervise a child's learning, this demand is really challenging. Thus said, parents these days scarcely bring up their children. They only finance them. But if such an approach is implemented, definitely students would start loving mathematics. And to evoke interest in mathematics, parents can tell stories analogies and anecdotes. One such anecdote that I would like to share 
is of Dr. Albert Einstein and his famous equation E equals mc square for which E is known. Now, as you may know, E is energy in a stationary body, m is its mass and c is the speed of velocity, uh, speed of light. So, as we know, the speed of light is huge. So, m times c square should also be huge. This means the energy contained in every substance should be used. But then, how is it that all this energy goes unnoticed? This, Dr. Einstein explains with the help of an analogy. He tells the story of a rich man, a very wealthy person, who is very miser as well. He is reluctant to spend even a single rupee on anything. This way, the society never comes to know how wealthy he is. It is similar with energy. It cannot be observed until liberated externally. So all this amount, tremendous amount of energy cannot be observed. It can be only observed during a specific process known as radioactive disintegration. He further carries on his story of this rich wealthy person. This wealthy guy, he bequeaths his wealth to two sons of his on a condition that they give a little amount of his wealth to the community. Yes. Now, that is exactly what happens during radioactive disintegration. A substance is split into two. A substance is split into two with a little bit of energy released into the atmosphere. Now, if Dr. Einstein understands the importance of using stories, analogies and anecdotes to explain his theory so that people can learn, it is a must that our parents and teachers should employ such ma manners of teaching. Now, despite the fact that we ha Indians haven't been taught using such analogies, we are still quite good at mathematics. We are able to unlock patterns, crack codes and do great at certain specific areas of mathematics. We have been immensely employable overseas in tech giants like IBM, Google and many others. But there is a lot to be yet accomplished in pure mathematics. It is a very sad fact that not even a single Indian has ever, be, ever been awarded the Fields Medal. For those who are unaware, the Fields Medal is the equivalent of Nobel Prize in Mathematics only more prestigious as it is awarded once every four years. This is really very disheartening. But it is not that we do not have the power to excel. We do have the potential to do great. And I say this because we are master utilitarians. As we all know, we have achieved phenomenal success at cricket. Right? And that is mainly because of this. It is because of the way it is played. It is played with minimum requirements. A bat, a ball, and even pebbles, bricks, anything as wickets. And that makes it employable everywhere. As in cricket, so in maths. All it requires is a pen, a paper, and a brain. And math can be employed everywhere. One may say that these days, mathematical adventures and voyages are, do require computer aid. Yes, that is true. But in a developing nation like India, most most youth are equipped with softwares, uh, with a modern computer and softwares like Mathematica, MATLAB, etc. Now, these softwares are going to make a huge impact in the 21st century. There are a couple of reasons for this. The first one is that these softwares help us realize mathematical beauty more evidently. Now, I'll, I'll show this to you with the help of an illustration. Now, this for most of us is a triangle. If we extend our approach, if we have a white triangle inscribed in this one, it divides the bigger triangle into three smaller triangles. We can carry this approach as well. This ca we can carry this approach further as these three smaller triangles can again be divided into another three and another three and another three. This pattern is beautiful and it is known as the Sierpinski triangle in mathematics. This can go on till infinity and this is a very well known fractal. Now, it doesn't end here. What is beautiful is its relation with something else. Now, most of us may know that this is the Pascal triangle. It is, uh, it is very much prevalent in our education system, the Pascal triangle, um, where every number is the sum of the, two numbers, uh, of the two numbers above it. Now, what if we differentiate the even numbers from the odd numbers? We don't see much here, right? What if we extend it? Now, if we differentiate the even numbers from the odd numbers, we see something happening, right? 
What if we extend it even further? Yes, there's something happening. Even further, the Sierpinski triangle emerges. This is the relation of the Pascal's triangle to the Sierpinski triangle, and this is delightful. This, all this be mathematical beauty is more evident with the help of softwares. Now, the second reason these softwares are really um, making a huge impact in mathematics is a little lengthy. So, please stay with me on this. Um, it goes like this: that computers were developed because of computational mathematics. Now, these computers help us understand the truths of mathematics in a better way. Now, these mathematical truths help our scientists to make even better computers. As you see, this is an endless loop, and this loop is a metaphor to both mathematical logic and computer programming. Now, we are privileged to be a part of an age wherein computers and the human mind work together to make the world a better place. As you know, mathematics has two important has two important components: imagination. The ultimate source of imagination is the human mind. Second, computation. Computation demands have gone beyond the reach of the brain, and there come in softwares. But none of this matter at all if we fail to make the most of the opportunity provided to us by this age. We have to promote mathematical temperament. I think. there shall be a society wherein we implement mathematics not just as a part of our curriculum but also as a part of our culture i dream of a society wherein just like magic tricks even mathematical tricks are performed in halls and theaters only then shall the brilliant young minds like you of our society shall be swept over by the wave of mathematical beauty sometimes it so happens that parents teachers and even math educators do not know how to begin a mathematical exposition sometimes when nothing seems to be right all matters is just to begin begin sharing ideas the rest shall flow sometimes when you don't even find a proper beginning you can come come forward with anything strange or even random you can also begin with let's talk about potatoes thank you <laughs>